And it's crunch time here on the jump. Tim Duncan's one year run as an assistant coach appears to be over. Mark Stein reporting he will step away from his full time spot on the Spurs staff. Ramona, do you see another coaching role in Timmy's future? Well, you know, I'm, I'm surprised by this. I'm a little bummed out by it because, you know, he was always the guy who would step in when Pop would miss a game here. And it made me think he was, you know, he was, a he was eyeing this as his future. We still don't know who's going to be the replacement for Pop when he eventually retires. So, I, you know, I, I, I thought Timmy might have been that guy. But, but if he's stepping away here, um, you know, I, obviously maybe it's not. Yeah, I'm going to miss having Tim Duncan around the NBA day to day, but uh, I can't say I'm surprised. I never got the sense this was the permanent thing for him, but you can't rule out another coaching gig, I guess. You got a taste of it. What's he going to do with all the clothes? I mean, we've never seen Tim Duncan <laughs> in this many suit jackets before. <laughs> That's a great point. He bought all this new stuff, and now, please, maybe he'll find a lovely place to donate it to. Let's talk about the Phoenix he Suns. He can wear them when he plays paintball. There you go. Boom. <laughs> the Suns unveiled their new City Edition jerseys on ESPN.com. A story broken by Zach Lowe. Are you a fan, Zach, of the new Black Ooh. Valley jerseys? I am more than I, more than I thought I would be. I'm typically not a black jersey guy. I think it's kind of lazy, but the colors really like sing off of the black. It's really bright and shiny. I, I kind of like it. It's growing on me. Dude, I think those are the best jerseys. I think Charlotte and and the Sun City jersey are the best ones I've seen so far this year. And I love Kelly Oubre getting out of the car like that. He totally sold it. <laughs> that was amazing. With, with, with the horse and the whole yeah. the whole nine was incredible. Yeah, I love the Charlotte jerseys as well. We need to have like a whole jersey retrospective the next time you guys are both on. We'll, we'll work on that. Everyone's new city of jersey city edition jerseys. Let's talk about the NCAA. They announced plans for a series of basketball tournaments dubbed Bubbleville. The event will feature 40 teams playing at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut between November 25th and December 5th. Ramona, do you think the NBA is going to have to check down to these kinds of regional bubbles at any point this season? I really hope not. I mean, Rage, I, like, I think we've seen from baseball and from the NFL that we are going to see teams that have some COVID cases. Um, the NBA, if they're not going to do a bubble like they did in Orlando, you're going to have some outbreaks. Obviously, the NBA is not as socially distant as baseball naturally is, and they don't have as much time between games as football. So I am worried about it, but um, I hope it doesn't come to these regional bubbles because I think even just saying that doesn't that send you into like a like a cold sweat thinking about going back to a bubble. I mean, I wasn't there, but you you know experienced that There's firsthand. A full body and every guy panic. I talked to who yeah. did, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the players would have to the players would have to agree to it too, and I don't think any of the players, the players' union, are super excited about the idea of, of introducing a bubble again. Maybe for the finals or something, but you know, the Knicks practice facility being closed this week and this Bubbleville stuff—it's a wake-up call. Like we're back in the real yep. world. This is going to be an issue. It's not going away. In fact, it's getting worse. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see the story we started with at the top of the show, Ramona's story on testing, whether that impacts how leagues are able and sports and, and the NBA teams in specific are able to function just within their small group. Forget fans, but just within the players and the people in the organization. Yeah. And, of course, there's been national news on vaccines that sort of ramped up in the last couple of weeks. So we'll see how that affects the NBA season as well. Bubbleville, though, for the end of this month for college basketball, and we'll see how that goes, too. All right, now that the season is, though, on track to start, you know what that means, my friends. Las Vegas starting to release preseason odds. Caesars William Hill recently released theirs for MVP for the upcoming season. At the moment, the co-favorites are two-time defending uh, MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, as well as Luka Doncic. They also have Anthony Davis ahead of LeBron with Steph, Kawhi, KD, and Harden also on the board. Whoa. Zach, I'm going to be honest. When I started reading out that line and said two-time defending, I was like, wait, Giannis isn't defending anything, but he is for sure defending his two MVPs. Ooh. Well, no, I mean, normally we say two-time defending. <laughs> that means champion, right? So in this case, he is absolutely... Do you defend an MVP? Do you defend an MVP, Zach? I don't yeah, know. I think you yeah, I think you can defend it. Yeah, I think you do. Yeah. Okay, deal. He's the two-time defending champion, and is he your early MVP favorite right now, Zach? No, I'm going to go Luka Doncic. Uh, I wanted to go LeBron because I feel like he's come second so many times, but I'm just afraid he's going to load manage a lot of games this year. And by the way, justifiably so. Maybe we shouldn't even knock him any credit for that. But I do feel like fair or not, and I don't think it's totally unfair, 
I think voters are going to be very hesitant to award Giannis a third straight MVP, even if he has the best statistical case because of the two straight playoff disappointments. I think there's going to be a widespread hesitancy among the voting body to do that. So I think Luka is the safest choice. Um, yeah, Rachel, can I get those odds on Kevin Durant? <laughs> yeah. Is that plus 1,500? I mean, I mean, give me that right now. I was going to say Kevin Durant anyway because I think his storyline coming back from the Achilles injury, starting the new, starting with the new team in Brooklyn, I like what they have going. I spoke to a couple of people who saw him working out recently here in Los Angeles. They said he looked great. If Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant again in the Eastern Conference and the Nets move up in the playoff seedings where he's he's the guy, I I, I like that pick a lot if, with those odds. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I absolutely like those too. Although we should clarify for everyone, you are not betting on the players you cover. Maybe oh, a no, few M&Ms you know, back and forth. If you were to. Right, exactly. We can give you <laughs> odds on M&Ms or something <laughs> like that. I think it is going to be interesting. I think the way that uh, players load manage, quote unquote, is certainly going to take into account. But I do wonder if if playoff, you know, look, we saw it with James Harden, right? There was a little bit. I wouldn't I wouldn't even call it voter fatigue. I would say that it was sort of voter education after a couple seasons that voters were looking for more of a killer instinct for him than they saw in those ensuing postseasons. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.